What's up guys, Steven here from Powell's Power Ups. This is the overview video for Douglas Smith's Darkness V3 lightsabers from SP Sabers. Your Kylo Ren replica installation is completed. Um, this is your overview video, so sit down and get comfortable. It'll be a little longer, but we need to go over everything about your lightsaber. That way you know how to properly handle it, how to take it apart, how to put it back together, how to operate it, things like that. I want you to take care of your investment. I want you to enjoy it and get the most out of it. So here we go. Let's dive in. So everything, most everything, when you get it, will be inside of your main box here except for your side blades I'll have wrapped up in a little bubble wrap it packet just because they didn't fit inside the box. <clears throat> so when you first get to um, open the box, you'll notice you have a little what looks like cardboard square, but this is actually a clear acrylic stand for the plaque that came with your lightsaber. You can put a little piece of double-sided sticky tape on the back of the um of the plaque and you can set it down inside of here so when you set it down it holds your plaque up at an angle and you can set that up in front of your lightsaber for display purposes if you want so everybody i did these for i got these for next you got some paperwork this paperwork goes over all of the fonts that are on your lightsaber and how they are organized in terms of their blade ignition timings and who they're from in other words, you have K-Sith and Kyberphonic fonts on here. They're the two best out there for Kylo Ren fonts. And then the next several pages are actually instructions on how to, um, how to operate your lightsaber. And there's several pages, as you can see. So keep them handy. Um, take your time with them. I will say that um, with this lightsaber having the Profi board in it, operating system 6.7, there is a crazy amount of features that this lightsaber does. So pay special attention to the instructions. Hitting buttons certain ways matter, but not just that, but also the orientation of the saber, whether it's pointing up or down, or whether you're twisting it and things like that. So there's, there's a ton of features that this does, but if you're not careful, you can be activating things that you don't mean to be activating. So just go really slow with it when you first get it. So when you get your um, down to the saber, this is what the box will look like. Here on the left side, you have your battery charger, your Nightcore battery charger for your 21700 lithium ion battery. This is a 5,000 milliamp hours. This is the biggest 2100 uh, battery uh, we can pretty much get in this lightsaber. So that's what I got. I want you to have the most runtime and power. Um, while I'm at it real quick, I, when I first got to work on your lightsaber, I prepped your chassis and everything like that before I ever actually opened your box. But when I opened your box, I noticed you had um, this chassis inside. I wasn't aware that you had your own chassis already. So I was gonna put my chassis aside and just use it for another lightsaber. But I wanted to test this one first before using it. And I decided not to use it because of the battery compartment. So here's the 21700 battery, right? And I'm actually gonna send this to you um, so you can have it back. You can maybe go onto the CrossGuard um, support group or the CrossGuard addict group on Facebook and maybe you can sell it on there if you wanted to. And you still have the battery tabs with it too. But I didn't use it just because, and you'll see for yourself, when you put your battery inside of the battery compartment, it is pretty much impossible um, to get back out unless you like use some kind of tool and push from the other side, which you would not be able to do if your actual profi board was sitting there. And it was just, I didn't want you to have a lightsaber, you know, where when it was all said and done that you couldn't get the battery in and out and you possibly could break it, you know, trying to do so. And that's that doesn't even have the battery tabs in it yet, which would make it even tighter. So I did, I didn't want to use it. Maybe maybe there's a smaller 21700 like if he didn't use a like if it didn't use a, a PCB protector or maybe if you had the 4000 milliamp hour that might fit in there but for all of my sabers that I did the installs I used the biggest one possible. So I decided not to use this chassis and I did use um, my own chassis but we'll look at that in a minute. So you got your plaque here. Haven't messed with that. Still in the wrapper. And then down inside here, you have a little Ziploc baggie that has your two Allen wrenches and your um, adapter for the JJ's Industries belt hanger, since the clip on here is, is uh, functional with that. So your two Allen wrenches, uh, the smaller one is for your 
uh, main blade set screws and the bigger one is for the screws, the button head screws that hold your hilt together. So now we'll get out the lightsaber and open it up. I'll show you how to get inside of it, put your battery in and get it operating. Um, when you get the lightsaber, you'll notice your blade plugs are inside. So I'll go ahead and start by taking those out. I did upgrade your main blade set screw to a bigger set screw. It was a really, really tiny one, I think M2, but now it's an M3, which is the same size as the side blades. So they all match the same size is used now. So the bigger one on the main blade helps hold the main blade in place. And you only need one Allen wrench to do all three blades versus switching to a different size for the main blade. Also your blade plugs um, are fully metal, right? And NeoPixel connectors, um, if, if you were to use the metal blade plug and drop it down inside of there, you would short that. So for all your blade plugs, I 3D print these plastic covers that go on the bottom so that you can actually be able to use them. So that's glued onto the bottom of all your blade plugs. So when you get your lightsaber, you'll notice all your blade plugs will be in it. And you can leave them in for display purposes. You can even turn the lightsaber on and swing it around if you want, and it's okay to use them. You don't have to worry about any electrical shorts. All right, so you got your seven pin TCSS connectors on the inside. When we talked about the installation, we said that having NPXL connectors wasn't like a big deal for you just because you'll probably have your blades in most of the time so that you'll be trooping. Um, so we just went with the standard seven pin connectors from the custom saber shop. Next, um, to open up the lightsaber, now that we're ready to go, the first thing you're gonna do is need to remove your main switch, which is kind of uh, a little magnetic switch that sits down inside of there. So it helps, it's important to get a pair of like plastic or ceramic tweezers like these. You can get them super cheap on Amazon for just a couple dollars. But what you gotta do to get this magnetic main switch is you just gotta grab it in those little grooves, get a good grip on it, and then pull straight up, and then you can pull it out just like that. So you gotta get the main switch out of step one. Step two is you're gonna untuck the red wire from your gash and slide it down out of this top clip. Okay, that's step two. And then step three, now we can finalize um, opening of the lightsaber by removing the three button head screws on the, on the outside of the lightsaber. So you're gonna take those all the way out. So I like to turn it upside down, kind of hold it by the emitters. And then I just grab the, sh the, the handle section here and just start to lift up and off. And it just slides up and off. So you'll notice here, you have a 3D printed uh, spacer. It's like a, it's a resonance chamber that I made to help concentrate the sound and really help it blast out the bottom of the lightsaber. You'd be surprised how big of a difference it makes. But this, let me set this down. This just slides down inside of your hilt handle like so and just stays in the bottom there and if it comes out that's okay just don't lose it but this portion is just a shell none of this actually is functional it's just you know slides on and off the bottom next you have the middle section here where the gash is this is also a shell and you can slide it off but your auxiliary switch sticks out a little bit so be very careful when you're taking this off that way you don't you know snap off the auxiliary switch but give it a little wiggle and then you can slide that up and off too and there's your auxiliary switch which sticks out. So now you see what I'm saying? So this is, you know, just a shell portion too. Just set that aside. And then this is the, really the central core of your lightsaber. Um, you got your Profiboard version 2.2. It has operating system 6.7. It's running with a two switch setup and FET 263's um, blade styles and prop file for button operation. You got your SD card in there with your sound fonts on it and you do have one copy of your configuration file on the SD card if in case you were to want to um, do some 
some changes to the lightsaber, you could do that. Just make sure if you were to alter that copy, make an original copy of it yourself first. In case you mess something up, you have the original to revert back to. So I got you my standard chassis. This is PLA printed, um, hash box black. And then I sanded it down and painted it um, a metallic kind of mix of gold and copper and some brown just to kind of try to match the paint you have on your upper and lower engines. Um, it has a light panel design down the side. You got 28 millimeter speaker at the bottom. This is from the Sabre Merchant. It's the black one. It's the three watt eight ohm. Um, so the eight ohm speakers are great for, they don't have a lot of distortion or clipping. They're very clear and they sound really great. The back side here is your battery section. Um, it's, it has a little spring tab in there and it's open enough that the battery goes in and out really well. So I'm gonna demonstrate that a couple times just so you know how to do it. And there's gonna be boot sounds. It's gonna boot up and play a sound every time when I do it. But you start by putting the negative side of the battery in first. You look at the label, you see the negative side. Negative side is always the spring side. So you just push that in first, use your finger, just kind of push it against that spring and then and then you just pop that positive side in. And it's pretty easy to get in and out, as you can see here. Way easier than it would be for that other chassis. So I'm not gonna put it all the way in yet. I wanna talk about the Profi board one more time. So the Profi board USB port sticks up a little bit. Um, if you were to wanna access your SD card or that USB port, you just simply lift up this uh, first order symbol is emblem symbol piece is actually just a little wire cover that snaps down inside of there but opening that up allows you to hook up to your usb port or get the sd card out if you want to when you're done you just press it back down inside that inside that fitted area just to cover up the wires make it more aesthetically pleasing uh you also have this what i use is called liquid whoops 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 dropped it it's called liquid tape I use that to cover the electrical connections where I wired up um, different wires because we're sliding these metal parts on and off. I don't want any of them to contact anything and possibly, you know, create a short and fry your electronics. So there is electrical tape, liquid electrical tape covering those. So that's what the black stuff is. All right. Putting in a battery gives it power. So we get a boot sound. Now your saber has power. Your power switch or activation switch is this one right here that has the magnet glued onto it. That's where how the main switch, that's how the main switch connects, right? Um, so be careful not to tear that off. But the glue on it's pretty strong. And then your auxiliary sticks up a little higher. There's no magnet on it. It, it works a little differently. So to put it back together, we're gonna start by sliding on this shell piece first. Got the blue wire right there, which is glued on up there in the gas using E6000. Got a little piece of heat shrink at the bottom to keep it together. But you're gonna face the gash up towards that blue wire, slowly slide it on over the Profi board, trying not to touch anything electrical. Then you're just gonna gently wiggle this down into place. And what you can do is you can actually lift up the bottom auxiliary switch area which is this rubber one here see the black one doesn't do anything that's why the paint's still on it but the auxiliary is, it button is here which is why the paint's rubbed off the paint doesn't stick good to the rubber but your auxiliary buttons under there so you put on you can either put the spacer just down inside your hill or you can kind of just set it over your speaker like so it's so probably easier just to put it in the hill slide that in and then this this gas section right here lines up with your auxiliary section, your auxiliary switch, sorry, like that. Once you get it together, then you're just gonna look down inside these holes. Um, you wanna get them lined up and you'll start to thread in all three of the outer button head screws. But you're not gonna go all the way tight yet. You're just gonna get them started because if you tighten down one all the way, then it makes the other three very difficult to get in, in place. Once you do get the, I start with the other two, then I get the middle one in, I turn it up, give it a little shake so everything lines up right, and then I screw the middle one in all the way first. 
when, once it stops, I give it about an eighth inch turn more to tighten it. I don't, I don't go any more than that because you don't want to strip anything. Also, I forgot to mention this lightsaber when I originally got them, these outer button head screws were M3 size, I think. Maybe M2 or M3, something like that. I think they were M3. Anyway, the handles holes were just through holes, same as this outer shell here. And these button head screws only actually screwed into the outer portion. Well, I guess some of the fitment was off and there was a lot of rattle and wiggle in the lightsaber hilt. So I took those out and I re-threaded, I drilled and tapped the holes up, up a size to M4 so that I could also thread the holes in the handle section itself. So now the screws thread together the handle and the core section, which totally eliminates all wobble and all rattle, and it makes the lightsaber very sturdy, very strong, and it, there is zero rattle or wobble in it now. So that's definitely a modification that I do to all of these as well. Once you get that back together, you can run your red wire back up through that top clip. Then I kind of just curl it and I just tuck it down. It's kind of over across this way down into the gash. And then you can take your main switch and drop it in. Then I just kind of test the auxiliary switch. I'll show you the dark side. I know what I have to do. I killed Snoke. I'll kill you. So I know that's lined up right. Sometimes it might not be lined up just right, but it should be lined up right every time if you screw the this uh, middle one in all the way down first and then the sides. And then you got your main switch here, which activates. So as you can see, the lightsaber works um, just fine without the blades in so you can have the blade plugs in and just you know show it off to people like that but if you want to put the blades in that provides an even better experience so we'll move on to that next so you got your shadow foil props um side blades these are clear looks like um clear pla printed so they're kind of hard i would recommend be careful with these not to crack or break them they might be a little more brittle than like the ones i make that are flexible so I wouldn't, I wouldn't hit those on anything. So be careful with these. But at the bottom of them, you can see where there's this cutout part. And that's where you line up the bottom of the emitter, if that makes sense. So when you put these in, there are spring-loaded pins inside of there, okay, that stick up. When you put them in, you want to make sure you go straight in and just push and apply pressure against the pins. You never want to go in and twist because you could possibly bend the pins. If that makes sense, you never want to twist, you just want to go straight in and out. So to line those up, we're just gonna, we're gonna stick it in, push against those pins, have your little Allen wrench ready so you can tighten down the screw. That holds it in place. It doesn't need to be super tight because you don't want to crack or damage the blade, but you just want to press up against the blade to hold it in place. Also noticed over here on this emitter, when I first got this, this emitter was twisted inward or down far enough that the screw was actually kind of behind this outer section here, so you couldn't screw it all the way out. So during you know install, I rotated it upwards a little bit so that it would be able to be taken out more. So that's fixed as well. Put your other one in, line it up before you insert. Then we're gonna insert it. I double tapped it. If you double tap the power, it activates muted. So once I get that in, tighten down the set screw just enough to press up against the blade. And then as you can see there, side blades are good. So I'm gonna turn the camera now. I'm gonna pause this, turn the camera, and then we'll put in the main blade. All right, so your main blade, I went with a 36 inch long main blade, which actually isn't too long. Um, it's one inch outer diameter, polycarbonate. It's the thin walled blade, so it's kind of light. You got the parabolic tip, everything's trans white, so the light shines through really well. 
NPXL, or I'm sorry, NeoPixel connector at the bottom, and then you have my custom TPU printed unstable base sleeve, which is very squishy, durable material. It's not going to crack or bake, break, and it's fitted. As you can see, you just put it on the blade, it slides on and off. So we're going to put the main blade in now. So just hold it against my body, insert it without any twisting, no twisting like we talked about, just straight in. Okay, hold the pressure against those against those pins and then tighten down the set screw. Again, you're just pressing up against the main blade. You don't want to go so tight that you strip the screw or, you know, puncture the plastic. Then once you get that on, you can slide down the unstable sleeve and there is the finished product. So I'm going to do, I'm not going to go over every function with you, but I will, you know, kind of demo it right now. That way you know it works. Um, in addition to activating with the button, you also have gesture controls. So you can thrust on the lightsaber and you can twist it off. So there we go. So there you have it. Um, the lightsaber is completed. I will go ahead and get this boxed up, probably get it shipped out to you tomorrow. So I'll be reaching out to you, give you the link to this video and get your return shipping address. Um, great lightsaber. Hope you enjoy it. Thank you for choosing me to install it and may the force be with you.